I love the iPad. I use it for a ton of things. And I think that the way that the iPad is set up by default is great for most people. I think most people who buy an iPad will be totally happy with most of the default settings. But you and I are not normal people. We are nerds who like to tweak things, configure things how we want. We like to make changes. We love a good setting screen, right? And so I wanted to take you through my favorite settings to change on the iPad to make it a better experience for me. And I think you will find things that work for you as well. I'm also going to try to make sure to show you some of the more niche things you may not have noticed before. So hopefully one of the things, at least on this list, will be something you didn't even know you could change and will make your life better today. Now, a little bit of meta news. You'll notice that my lighting is not particularly good today. My background is very much not aesthetic, uh, but that's because I'm in the process of moving. If everything goes well, I should be moving in a couple weeks here. And after that, I will be back on my normal routine, posting to the channel once or twice a week. And I hope you guys will stick with me through that. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be really, really great for the channel. It's going to let me mix things up quite a bit more. I'm going to have more space to work with in this little office that I have here, which is basically just this angle. Uh, but that's more than enough for now. Let's jump into the tips. So we have to start in the settings app, and that's going to be right here. Uh, you want to go to sounds first. This is where I find a couple things that are really helpful. So I hate when my iPad makes notification sounds. I really hate it. So make sure ringers and alerts is turned all the way down. This is not your media volume. This is a separate volume. So make sure this is all the way down and turn change with buttons off. If this is on, then sometimes you're going to change the volume on your device, and you're actually going to change the ringer and alerts volume. I don't want that. Just turn that off. Also, if you scroll all the way to the bottom here, we have fixed position volume controls. So this is on by default unless you have an iPad mini. So if you have one of the new iPad minis, this is off. And this is that thing where depending on how your iPad is oriented, the volume buttons are going to change which one is volume up and which one is volume down. So if I'm rotated like this, we'll have this button for volume up, this one for down. And if we're over here in landscape, it's going to be this one for up and this one for down. So it's slightly different. It may be confusing to you if you're used to the old way, but if you have like an iPad mini and an iPad pro and you switch between them and it's confusing to you, this is a nice option to change there. Next up, we have to go to the general settings. And so there's a couple little things here. There's a billion things here you can change, but I'm just going to show you the few things that I think you really should touch. So airdrop is first. Just make sure this is contacts only. If it's everyone, that's how you get into trouble with like senior neighbors on there and stuff. And like, you, it, just have it contacts only. That's the safer thing to do. So that's the first thing. And then iPad storage. So if you have an iPad that's full of stuff, iPad storage is your friend. It's going to show you what apps are using up the most data on your device. So if I see, let's say, Divinity 2, this is using up a lot of space. Maybe I don't have room for it. I do on this one, but let's, let's say I'm on a 64 gigabyte device. I can just offload the app or I can delete it right here and I'm going to save all of this space. So that's a really nice thing. If you're running out of space, come here. Also, the last thing I go here is the keyboard settings. There's a whole bunch of stuff here, but what I want to go to is hardware keyboard. Hardware keyboard lets you change things on the Magic Keyboard or other Bluetooth keyboards that you have connected. I like to turn off auto capitalization and auto correction. I'm using a real keyboard, so I don't really need those assists. I do like the shortcut for two spaces after a period or after a sentence, two spaces gives you a period. You can change the keyboard brightness and modifier keys. This is a really great one. I hate the caps lock key. I never use it. I never want it to be caps lock, but I do miss the escape key from my full size keyboards that the magic keyboard doesn't have. So what I have is the caps lock key mapped to escape. You can tap on any of these and change the mapping to any of your modifier keys on the keyboard. Now we're gonna go over to Control Center. This is just a thing that's handy to know. You can change what shows up in Control Center. So if I go up here and bring up my Control Center, I have all these controls here, right? But these aren't the default set. I can change them here. I can choose which ones I want available. I can add all of these. There's tons here that I can add if I want. And based on my needs, I can just put whatever ones on the list of controls. I can move them around. So this will sort the order. So this will make screen recording the first one. If I go up here now, screen recording is the first one at the list of uh, additional control center options. So I can add whatever ones I want. This is really great to customize the iPad experience to your needs. Going down to the next one, we've got display and brightness. Uh, try True Tone. Uh, you're not going to see it in this video, but True Tone is on by default on iPads, and I think it's great but you can turn it off and see kind of what the iPad would look like if it wasn't adjusting for your light in the room that you're in right now. I find it a little jarring actually to be like, whoa, it's actually adjusting it really nicely for me. So I like having True Tone on, but you may like having it off. And then Auto Lock. I think it's at five minutes by default or two minutes by default when you open up a new iPad or when you use a new iPad. I like to have it set to never. Sometimes I'm uploading large files. I'm doing more computery things on my iPad. And when the iPad screen turns off, a lot of things just stop 
functioning. And so I like to have it set to never. If you're using a Magic Keyboard, you can close it to lock the screen, or you can always hit the power button to turn it off. But I like to have it just never auto lock because it interrupts my tasks more often than I'd like. The next section is home screen and dock. And the only thing I would change here is show suggested and recent apps in the dock. I like to turn this off. I turned it off on my Mac settings as well. I don't like seeing those recent apps there. I just like having just the dock that I want. I can get to the apps through the app library or something else. But yeah, I like to turn this off to make my dock a little smaller. A couple things with the Apple Pencil. We've got some settings here. You can turn off the double tap gesture. So if you have issues where you accidentally double tap and you're like switching from your current tool to the eraser or like you're doing these like switches that you don't wanna do, you can just turn it off, that's fine. A lot of apps will have ways to switch anyway for you, uh, but yeah, you can turn that off if it's an issue for you. The other thing that can be kind of annoying is Scribble. I love the feature, I think it works pretty darn well, but I like to just have the keyboard pull up most of the time while I'm using my iPad outside the Magic Keyboard. So I actually turned this off because I don't want to scribble into things like the URL field. I just want the keyboard to come up, so I turned that off. Going down a little bit more, we have the battery. The one thing I would do here is just turn your battery percentage on. Now, the privacy page has one setting that's really, really useful. Obviously, you can go in and change all of your privacy settings here, but the one I want to call out is tracking. So you may have gotten pop-up notifications from apps that say, hey, this app would like to track you across the web, across apps or whatever. And you just say no to those all the time, probably. But wouldn't it be nice to not even be prompted for those in the first place and just auto-reject all of them? So if you turn off allow apps to request to track, it will never show one of those pop-ups. So I haven't seen any of those pop-ups in months because I turned this off and it's wonderful. You forget that it's even in a thing that you need to think about and that's because you don't have to think about it. They just don't show up at all. In the App Store, I actually turn off automatic downloads for apps and app updates. So app updates, I just like to see when apps have updates and do a manual install and I install like 20 apps at a time. That's just me. You probably want to have that on. That's probably what most people want. But automatic downloads for apps, this is if you download an app for the first time on your iPhone, it's automatically going to download on your iPad as well. And I personally don't want the same apps on these two devices, so I have that turned off. So I have to manually install apps from the iPad. If I want them on my iPad, I don't have it automatically syncing back and forth. Scrolling down a little bit more, we have passwords and that's going to authenticate. And I'm gonna blur out most of this page, <laughs> but the thing we're looking at is autofill passwords. So if I go in here, you can see all apps that allow to be your password manager. And iCloud Keychain will be checked by default and you can turn on any other apps that offer this functionality. I have one password, Chrome and Firefox installed, all that offer this functionality. And you can check as many of them as you want, or I guess you can check two of them if you want. There we go. Almost screwed that up a little bit. But you can have iCloud Keychain turned on with one of these. I actually find it to be a little annoying to have them fighting over which one is which. And like I accidentally autofill the iCloud Keychain one, which is out of date, and the iPad or the 1Password one is newer and I want to actually use. So I just turn off iCloud Keychain, only one password shows up, and it's a really seamless experience. This is a nice thing if you're using a third-party password manager. Scrolling down a little bit more, and we just have two sections left. If you go to Safari, you can change your search engine. So it's Google by default, but you can select any of these as well. I currently have it set to DuckDuckGo, uh, but you can select whichever one you'd like, and that's just how you set that. Additionally, a thing that really confused me at first is downloads. So you have a downloads folder both in iCloud Drive and locally on your iPad. So I like things to download to my iPad and then I can upload iCloud Drive on demand. I think it defaults to iCloud Drive though, which means if you download like a four gigabyte file, in Safari, it's going to upload that to your iCloud account. It's going to download it to all your other devices. You probably don't want that. You probably want to control like those large downloads better. So I like to have it download directly to my iPad, but you can switch it back and forth, whichever you prefer, or any other folder, directory, whatever on your device, you can do it there. And the final setting for those Apple News users out there, there's actually a setting in here to restrict stories in today, in the today view to only sources that you follow. So if you see like all this junk in there that you don't wanna see, you can turn this on. And now when you go to the today view in Apple News, it's only gonna show you things you've chosen to follow. It's more like an RSS reader there, but it makes it more likely you're gonna see things that you actually are interested in, that you like. And yeah, that's just a nice little thing to make Apple News a little bit more useful, especially around the Apple One plan and you have Apple News Plus and you don't really use it. And maybe one of your issues is stuff that shows up there is stuff you don't actually wanna see. This is a nice little trick there. So yeah, those are some settings changes you can make to the iPad to make the experience a little bit better. I showed you what I prefer, but you can obviously select whatever you think is best for you. But yeah, if you liked the video, hit the like button. If you loved it, hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.